Great, so next we're going to be hearing from Jack Robb, and, and Jack is the Executive Officer, Air Pollution Control Officer for the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, and he'll be talking to us today about black carbon, what it is, and what we can do about it. Welcome, Jack. And I think we're going to be in a conversation with you next time. And our fabulous Hannah will be in conversation with Jack.
clearly CO2 and, and frankly the dependence on automobiles here in Marin is a, is a big part of that footprint. Um, so we're, uh, just to help you stay up to date with the science and everything, are you saying that, that the automobile exhaust is part of the black carbon footprint? Uh, sure, it's, it's, a, it's a small fraction, but you'll find okay. it in a much larger than diesel particulate that we see emitted from trucks, trains, planes. So if we're kind of looking at the, at the yield pie chart here, right. what piece of that would be wood smoke versus diesel versus auto? Or just kind of give us a ballpark so we have a sense. Sure. Uh, well, greenhouse gas in, in general, about 40% of it's going to be CO2, another you know, quarter of it's going to be black carbon, and, and the rest of it's going to be things like N2O and some other things like that. So, okay. So, so, so in, the, in that segment that's black carbon, how does that break down in terms of like our everyday uses of things? Like where's the diesel, where's the wood smoke, where's the other pieces of that? Just so we have a sense of what the spread is in our county. Sure. Uh, so you're going to see black, are you asking in terms of where you see the black carbon? Or you um, the sources of black carbon and that sure. piece of the pie. Sure. Well, uh, your big sources are going to be uh, wood smoke, of course. Uh, big sources are going to be, as I mentioned, uh, diesel operations. But uh, the, the, the issue is, as you look at wood smoke, for example, uh, a significant portion of the wood smoke is going to be black carbon as well. So, okay. I mean, it's it's complicated. Relative, I'm sorry. It's complicated. It is. Yeah. The relative contribution varies, and, and what I'm trying to do is provide it for Marin County. But I can tell you, how across the Bay Area, it's a little, it's a little easier for me sure. to tell you. So, yeah. So, well, uh, when you take a look at greenhouse gases in general, you have about, like I said, about 40% of it's going to be greenhouse gases associated with CO2. Okay. About a quarter it's going to be black carbon as well. And, and okay. those, and that breaks down from a variety of other sources. Great. Well, I'm just curious because I think we're trying to take a really abstract concept like carbon or black carbon and then try to break it down to, okay, well, where are these things coming from in our lives and then what are the things that we can do in a positive, you know, warm and loving community way to support our whole community to address some of those. So that's, that's where I was going with that. Thank you for bearing with me. And it's amazing how much he knows. It's not like, wow. So I'm glad I asked him. Um, so let's see. We wanted to find out too what the impact of black carbon is in general on air quality. Uh, well, black carbon actually also contributes considerably to health impacts. And so uh, we've struggled a lot with wood smoke up here in Marin County, as we've talked about. Um, and the black carbon is a part of that wood smoke, and the wood smoke in general contributes to bronchitis, respiratory illnesses, pulmonary uh, lung function restrictions, and a variety of other health-related health related impacts like that. Well, I'm going to ask you an off-script question here sure. just for a second. Thanks for bearing with me. So I've lived in Fairfax now since 2001, mm -hmm. and I love it. Uh, I love Marin, and I'm so glad to be here. And, um, but it somehow feels like there's more smoke. Is that true, or did that, is it just that I'm more sensitive to it, or what's, is there more smoke? Well, you mentioned controversy before. I wasn't sure if that's what you were leading to. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get into it. I'm just curious, like, am I making this up, or is this something we're uh, No, about? actually, wood smoke levels have come down considerably in the Bay Area. Um, overall, our, we believe our Spare the Air program has, which is a program that prohibits uh, wood smoke during the wintertime, uh, has led to a very dramatic reduction in regional PM levels. Okay. What's PM again? And I'm sorry, particularly that. Thank you. Well, I apologize, it's just my speed. Uh, whereas black carbon is a significant portion of that PM, probably three quarters of that PM, but, but still we've seen a dramatic reduction in PM levels here in the Bay Area. We attribute the Spare the Air program to be a part of that reduction. It's not solely a result of, it's not solely responsible for it. That being said, we know that in Marin County, it is a significant problem still. Uh, we have these valleys, like San Geronimo Valley, where we have considerable concentrations of PM persisting. And it has to do with the lack of alternatives to wood smoke burning in the fireplace. Uh, we have a lot of folks that rely on the fireplace as their sole source of heat. They put wood in the fireplace, and they have no other way to heat their home. And so we're really concentrating now on how we can maybe convert these homes to propane or natural gas and some other things like that. We think that our regulatory tools are probably at an end. We probably have to provide grant dollars for that. 
That's a fantastic idea, Jack. I like that. We definitely, I know a lot of people who, who burn wood, um, you know, I, I do a lot of work in the Valley of the Syndrome and the Valley Community Center, and uh, we know a lot of people who burn wood are actually really cost conscious or really trying very hard to make it. And so I think having those grants would be fantastic. Um, so a little controversy, that's why I mentioned it. Okay. <laughs> so some, folks don't, some folks think we're doing a great job, some folks are not so happy with us about restricting wood burning, and we hear kind of both sides of that picture. I mean, I'm it, it's always hard to be part of a regulatory process, there's no question about that. So uh, we have my sympathy in that area. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up shortly, but I just want to let you know that we're going to give you follow-up information on the Earth Day Marin website. You can always go to the Bay Area Air Quality District website, uh, Management District website, and the Spare the Air website to get more information so that you can keep track of these grants and these opportunities and tell your friends about them so that they could have an opportunity to uh, upgrade uh, what they're doing in their home if they want to. Um, and Anna, if you don't mind, let me mention please. this one real quick thing. Absolutely. Specifically, what we're doing here at Marin County, we're partnering with the county to provide $750 for a rebate program to help convert people over to natural gas or propane or other alternatives like that. Um, that's It's a program we're launching for next winter season. We're hoping people can take advantage of it during the summertime. Great. And it's, you know, it will take you typically $1,500 to $2,000 to install a natural gas line. It can oftentimes be a lot more than that, but this will at least be an important step towards, you know, uh, cutting down the cost. So. That's cool. Maybe we should organize some rent, some like kind of rent parties to help people make up the uh, rest of it, so we can all kind of chip in and help improve air quality in our area. Um, so this is great. I think uh, I just want to mention quickly, Jack, because I know this is really important to you. The transit and, and reducing those diesel emissions and things like that are really important to the Bay Area air quality. Uh, dis uh, management district, and you can find out more about that aspect and other aspects of black carbon, as well as wood smoke uh, upgrade opportunities and things like that at their table that's here. And you can join the Spare the Air alerts, where you can get an alert on your email so you'll know if it's a Spare the Air day, you'll be able to comply with the regulations and not get any fines or anything like that, and you'll also just be able to pitch in and say, hey, I'm not going to drive today, I'm going to go back to work or I'm going to do something else instead. So, Jack, any last word? Um, no, Hannah, but I thought you, I thought you did a great job. The, the, uh, oftentimes I get what can you do. That's what this is all about in terms of birthday bread, by the way. I think it's a great, great event. What can you do? You, you like you said, you take transit, carpool. You've got those kind of opportunities here in Marin if you need to get into the city. Uh, buy an electric vehicle. Make your next vehicle purchase electric or zero emissions. There's a variety of opportunities. I drive a Volt, basically, and it's a great car. So I got to get to Sacramento a lot. And I cut my carbon footprint considerably by doing so. So there's a lot you can do to make your make your home more energy efficient. There's a lot of things you would do to reduce your carbon footprint, reduce air pollution, will also help reduce black carbon as well. And uh, just thought I'd mention that for you. Great, thanks, Jack. Okay. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Thanks. I'm so sorry, I can't do questions right now. We're actually not fully funded for this event and we can't afford to stay here today. I'm so sorry, I apologize.